What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Station's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Another awesome, exciting episode of Horror Research Starting. Today, I have my awesome guest from Any Last Words podcast, Joe. Joe, how's it going? It's going. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Good, good, kind good. of a long day, even though I didn't do much, but it still seems like a long day. How about yourself? It does It does seem like a long day, and it's friggin' hot today, too. Holy crap. Uh, I Where I'm at, we're, we're a little over 100 degrees today, so I'm staying inside. <laughs> I don't know what the temperature is around here. I mean, where I'm at in New York, it's, I think it's about 80-something. Oh, nice. Outside. And I recorded, like, my studio, or whatever you want to call it, my horror area is my attic. So when it does get hot, like in the 90s and up, it's, oh my God, it's hell up here. Like uh, the past week, brutal. And it's even worse when I, when I have to record because it's just like, shit, because I love to record. I wanted it to be a long episode, but in my mind, I'm like, this needs to hurry up because yeah. it's hot up here. So like right, once, like right once I'm done recording, I'll hit save and I just run downstairs just to get a deep breath. <laughs> just to get a deep breath. It'd be like... <laughs> And say it's like 105 up here, it'll be like 96 downstairs, but feel just uh, beautiful down there. Yeah, right? <laughs> this air feels so good. So you're down there uh, for two minutes. It, does it get humid where you're at, or is it uh, just pretty pretty dryish kind of heat? Because humid sucks. Humidity yeah. is horrible. We get a mix. We get a mixture of both. Mm. When it's humid, oh my God, it's it's hell. It's oh, thick. I, sticky Ugh. and nasty. I, I was like, how the hell am I sweating by watching TV? I'm sick. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Usually that happens to me when there's like a really good hamburger commercial. I just get really excited. I'm like, ah. Oh. It's like, why are you sweating? I'm glistening. Leave me alone. <laughs> that burger, that was delicious. <laughs> and see, see how you said burger, I have asked a few people this question. What is your go-to food when you're getting ready to watch a horror movie? Ooh, you know what? I I honestly like the good old fashioned uh, popcorn, popcorn, and just some kind of random candy, um, and just something to drink. So nice, nice. I actually have like a popcorn machine in my house for all of this. <laughs> awesome. I'm just looking at, admiring the background. I see that Jason mug or Jason plant holder. Jason something. Oh yeah, it's a, it's got. I got it at um. GameStop, actually. I got it at GameStop. It's got a fake uh, succulent in it. Nice. So it's got a little fake rubber plant in it. I'm like, great, it won't die like everything else. <laughs> Why do you say that? I had cactuses up here for a, a little while, like a little fish tank. Mm -hmm. I put like skulls and stuff in it and cool lighting. And they lasted about maybe a month. And after that, I was like, you know what? Plants just aren't for me. Yeah. My oh, wife, boy. I can't. I'm done. I gave up. <laughs> I can do like outside gardening, like fruits and vegetables and things like that. I can do that. But it's like for some reason, like actual house plants or flowers, they just go to shit. <laughs> I, I've never tried anything but a cactus. And once I, I was like, I can't make these live for more than a month. I just shouldn't be doing this. 
it's it's different. People, they're easier. Animals, easy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because they let you know when they're hungry, thirsty, got to go out. A plant, they just sit there the whole time. Like, I don't know when the hell I'm supposed to water you. Yeah. <laughs> or it's like you try to schedule it for the same time every day, but then you're always somewhere else, and you're like, shit, I got to water. And then you get home, and it's like you forget again that you had to water. And it's like, oh, shit, it's been like three days since I've watered you, buddy. I'm so sorry. Mama's been busy. <laughs> I don't know how it was with the cactuses. I, I even, like, Googled some things. I was saying, like, it's good to get, like, a spray bottle and just kind of missed them. Mm -hmm. I would do that a few days, and then – I forget for like two weeks <laughs> and they come back up here because I had them in my attic. So some days I would have it. If I know I'm going to record, I'll come up here, you know, water them real quick and then record. But some days I'll come up here last minute to record. I'll get, you know, I'll do it after the fact. And again, I forget. So <laughs> I will not babysit anybody's plants because <laughs> it was up dead. It's like, are you sure? <laughs> Positive children. They're not going to end up dead, but I'll tell you this. Um, I will give them a lot of candy before they go home. Like the grandparents, like shake you up, sugar you up, shake you up, send you home. <laughs> You're ready. Get you good and ready. <laughs> and if they're no. bad, I'm going to scare the hell out of them. Oh, <laughs> do you have any go-tos for scaring the kitties? Not, I haven't had to do it. So not yet, but I'm sure I could think of something like my, I have my niece. She'll come over here once in a while and I would feel bad if I scared her. She just like, Aww. It's cause it's my niece, but my nephews and little cousins, no, nah, they can get it. I don't even care. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's just her. Like she just she's just like special. So I I, mean, I can't. Oh. I did have a um, which I had put it away somewhere. But I have a Jason mask that I put on in front of her, and she got scared of him. Like hit under. She wouldn't come from under the table. She actually pointed at the mask if she wanted to see. Wouldn't come from under the table. Oh. I had and I had a pink mask that airbrushed, and I gave it. I had airbrushed it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I gave it, and I let her see that, and she came from under the table and grabbed it and put it on, and I gave it to her, but I think it broke, so I got to do another one for her. But that she was fine with, because it was pink, I guess. But she knew it was Jason. She's never seen the movie before, She, but she knows it's Jason's mask, which when you listen to one of my episodes, if you hear the intro, you'll hear her voice say, it's Jason's mask. Mm -hmm. And my brother, he sent me a video of her like looking at the mask, and I think he's like, who is this? She's like, it's Jason's mask, and he sent me the video. I was like, listen, I need that in my audio for the intro for the podcast. Because at the time, I was getting her to do a Friday the 13th review or um, run down of the list, you know, the, all the movies. Either way, mm -hmm. I was like, I need to, I, I want this to be in there permanently. That has to be in there right now. That's like the last voice you hear before we start talking. Oh, that's so cute and creepy. <laughs> it, that, that's one thing I love about little kids being in like movies or like talking or whispering in movies because it's, it's creepy. It's weird, but it's creepy. Yeah, because that's not a normal thing for a child to do because they're supposed to be innocent and happy and, you know, no, just... not creepy and shit and ominous and <laughs> like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> now, were, were you scared of anything when you were growing up? That's a great question. Yeah, um, one, I know, I don't remember every single movie that scared me, but one that really stands out to me is Creep Show Part 2. Oh, Okay. Thanks for the ride, lady. Thanks for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea why that's like to this day. I watch it and laugh, of course. Mm -hmm. but I remember, like I, at the time, I was one of the young. I was the youngest. Like I have older brother, older cousins, and all that. So you know, you're the youngest. You kind of tag along with them if they let you. <laughs> exactly. And it was between the ages of five and seven. I'm not exactly sure how old I was, but I would follow them around, play, you know, all that good stuff. But when it came time to watch horror movies. We either be at my mother's house or one of my aunt's houses, and it was Aaron, don't wake up, mom, or Aaron, don't wake up, I'm so and so. Because if you do, we're all gonna get beat because you're crying, watch the movie with us. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that deal. So, anyways, we we're watching it, and I don't know, if, I don't know if it was during the movie or after the movie, but I had to use the bathroom, but I was scared to go. So mm. I, had, one of them had to like walk me to the bathroom, wait outside the door, use the bathroom, use the bathroom, came back and finished the movie and watched other horror movies from then on, and. I don't remember the sleeping arrangements. And I don't know, like, you know, when you're with, as a kid, if you all sleep in one room or whatever the case may be, I'm sure that's how it was. Because I know for dance, I didn't sleep alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, like, it started from there. But, yeah, that scared me. And that's all I can, I'm, I know there's a lot more that scared me. That's just one that really stands out. I remember that scared me. Mm -hmm. And now I watch it, I just laugh. I'm just like, how the hell was this scary? But then I think of being a child and how your imagination just runs 
crazy. You know it's make believe, but you, your imagination just goes nuts. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was that. How about you? Um, you know the um, the intro to Tales from the Crypt nice. used to scare the living shit out of me. And like you, like it was always that you know when it was with mom or when I went to my aunt's house and my cousin's house. Mm-hmm. Especially when I went to my aunt's house, my aunt was she would write like horror short stories and read them to us. And you know, grandma would make popcorn and Kool Aid. We sit in the living room with our blankets and shit. And when she was done telling her scary story, it was usually around the time that Tales from the Crypt would come on or um, Tales from the Dark Side would come on like right after it. And I I don't know why it just the music and just, it's still like you, like you, it stands out. It's just distinctively, I can see the whole thing running through my head right now. Like the camera just kind of zooming through the graveyard and then up through his little like mausoleum and then down into the basement. As soon as he popped up, I would always like, completely have to have my face covered at that point because I don't know. It was just when he popped up out of that coffin and that whole entrance just intro just like scared the shit out of me. I could watch him the whole rest of the show, but just that intro just ruined my life. <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that because the voice, the crypt people the voice and laugh. Mm-hmm. You know, I call him my, he's my brother. For, we know each other since second grade, but he told me this when we were kids that that laugh scared him. At the time, I could do the laugh, so I, I don't know why the hell he told me, so I did it. He's like, yo, what oh. the fuck? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh, my God. But to make this to make this cooler and kind of funnier, so I do not remember the guy who do, who does the voice of the Crypt Keeper. I can't remember his name, but we met him at a con a couple of years ago. I told him that story. So I, after I told him that story, the whole time he talked to us, he talked in that voice and did the laugh for us, and, you know, it was, it was just so cool. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Doesn't he do, he does the voice for Chucky too, doesn't he? Brad, is it Brad something? Oh. Brad Dorf? I think I so. I'm Brad, horrible with names. Brad Dorf does the does the voice for Chucky. The guy I'm mm-hmm. thinking of, I think his name is John or something or Joe. I, I don't remember. I think his name starts with a J. Okay. I could Google it, but I don't ever fact check on my show. I just <laughs> throw shit out there. <laughs> Just see if it sticks. Sounds good. Sounds legit. We'll we'll go with that. You no, know, listeners, you guys can Google and fact check. Right. But um, speaking of Chucky, did you did you see the new Child's Play, the new Earth Child's Play? Um, I have not seen it all the way. I actually fell asleep in the middle of it. Oh. Not because it was boring. It was just because it was one of those days. Like it was like okay, we're gonna you know when we get home tonight, you know after dinner we'll set it up and we're gonna watch Chucky and like went to watch it and I fell asleep. So I've not, I haven't gone back to watch the rest of it yet, but it seemed kind of like, eh. I think it's because they changed it from, you know, like a serial killer who's dying and then puts his soul, you know, to mm-hmm. possess this doll to like an AI, like, I mean, I get it because it makes it more modern, but to me, it kind of like, just kind of really ripped the soul, if you will, out of Chucky. <laughs> I can see why you see. I really enjoyed it, and it was because of the whole AI thing. Just because, like you said, it made it more modern. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. It made it more modern, and then I know just reading, they couldn't do a lot of things because they would get sued. So they couldn't. They couldn't do similar kills. They couldn't have the similar background story. Mm-hmm. And then, as far as the voice, Mark Hamill, I'm a huge. I love. He. Oh yeah. I mean, he's my favorite Joker from the Batman animated series. I think he's everybody's favorite Joker from the Batman animated series. Like hands down, better than all the live action Jokers. Just the voice, it's so sinister. Yes. And I would love to see him do another horror. Movie. Not necessarily, it doesn't have to be the Child's Play, but another horror movie where he's a voice actor in it, just because he he has that perfect freaking voice for it. Mm-hmm. And it's just creepy. It's it's great though. <laughs> but I do. Yeah. Oh, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was, I was just going to say, I think you should finish that Child's Play movie. I understand some people don't like it some people, because of whatever whatever the reasons are. I, right. I respect it. I understand it. But it was, it was good for what it was. Well, I mean, I understand the whole, um, you know, they couldn't do certain things, couldn't give them the backstory because they might get sued. So for me, at that point, it's like, well, then why don't you try to make something else? Like, yeah. I mean... I mean, because then, well, I don't know, because then maybe it could get almost compared to the Terminator at that point. Like, you got this little AI thing, like, killing people. But I don't know. Um, I don't know. Like, to me, at that point, it's like, why, why wouldn't you just make something new? Like, if you're going to make it AI and you can't really use the backstory anyway, but you want to make it a little killing thing, a little killy doll, like, yeah. I don't know. No, I get, I get where you're coming from, though. That I think it would have gotten a better reaction from a lot of people if it did do that, as far as mm-hmm. just from the beginning. 
but it wasn't a bad movie. And the AI thing, another thing that's cool about it is it's showing you how reliable or how much we rely on technology. Mm-hmm. You see how he controlled every, he controlled the lady's car, he controlled the phone, like everything. It mm-hmm. drives everything. And I'm just like, that can't, I mean, maybe not to that extent, but that can really happen. You see hackers hacking shit all the time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Have you seen those new, um, those new smart refrigerators where they got the touch screen and shit? Like, yeah. Somebody actually hacked one of those, like when they first came out. So it's like, you can hack anything. So. And people want to get these damn smart houses where it's like, Alexa, lock my front door. Alexa, shut my windows. It's like, no, because Alexa's going to kill your ass one day. <laughs> so sure. it's going to lock you in that house and turn the ignition on or the igniter on on the stove and blow you up. <laughs> so that would make an awesome movie. Though. That's a great movie idea. <laughs> Killer house. <laughs> yeah, but I could see hackers going in there if they want to steal something from you. Wherever they can. Okay, you, you leave your house. You have a keyless house because you Alexa everything. They figure out how to hack and then you go home to I'm not nothing. Sure about Shut up, Alexa. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> butt out, asshole. <laughs> no, okay. that would be that would be a cool movie though. You're right. <laughs> it'd be a great I, it would be fun to be entertaining, low budget or not. Mm-hmm. So who I'm guessing, I'm just assuming. Did your is your mother the one that got you into horror? Um yeah, my mom and my aunt both did. Um my aunt was a little more in that little dark, darker tone than my mom was. Mm-hmm. Um, but my mom did have um, an appreciation for horror movies and such. So we got to watch, um, we got to watch a lot of stuff growing up, but then there was a lot we missed out on because my parents were like, you know, the four year olds that want to keep putting the tape back in the VCR Let's watch it again. Let's watch it again. It's like, can we not watch The Hunt for Red October again, please? You know how long that movie is, Dad? <laughs> oh, man. We watch it every night for three weeks. Please stop. <laughs> That's awesome, though. So, yeah. So, I feel like I've, um, in some sense, I have missed out on being able to watch more growing up. But at the same time, it's like, oh, okay, well... I can watch, I'm, I'm grown now. I can watch whatever I want. So <laughs> I get to play the catch up game and it's cool because, you know, when I meet people, you know, like you or other podcast hosts or people who do work in film, you know, they're obviously more educated than I am in some, in some, you know, aspects of horror movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so they'll, you know, refer movies to me like, Oh, you should check this movie out then. Oh my God. You never seen that. This is a, this is a dope ass movie. You should watch this one. So like I have this long list of, movies I have to catch up on. So yeah, it's just a, it's a journey. <laughs> definitely, it definitely is. Neither one of my parents are in the horror like at all. And I actually, the, I just seen the movie Christine about Ooh. maybe five or six years ago. And the funny thing is like, I'm a car person. I get it for my father. We love like muscle cars and all that. Mm-hmm. And the movie just happened. To, I, we were clicking through channels at his house. And the movie just happened to just literally just start. He's like, have you ever seen this movie before? I was like, no. And he liked, we watched the whole movie. And I, he liked the movie, I think, just because of the car. I mean, yeah. I, I have this both. I mean, I love horror in general. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this, I was like, wow, this is a good movie. So I watched it again. I think I only watched it like two or three times. But I love that freaking movie. I love the book. And it's one of those things where I kind of wish my car was like that as far as the fact of fixing itself and being mm-hmm. able to drive, especially with the white <laughs> is now. He figured yeah. out work or podcasting. And, you know, listen. Here's all these pickups. You go, you go pick these people up. I'll be here. And when you get back. Soon. Yeah. Boom. If they try to steal you, kill them. <laughs> right? Exactly. It's like the ultimate like car alarm. Like you don't even have to do shit. It'll, it'll handle itself. Exactly. Throw rocks at it. You're going to pay for that. Right. Uh, no, that was one movie I did. Um, I did grow up watching my, my aunt and my mom both were huge Stephen King fans, huge Stephen King fans. Like they, you know, every movie that came out, we had to watch, um, they always got every book that came out uh, when the stand, I don't know. Have you seen the stand at all? I have not. Oh, it's very long because when it came out, I think I was shit. I think I was like 10 or 11 when it came out. And it was actually like, um, like a made for TV mini movie, mini series type movie. Uh, kind of like it was Yep. Um, where it was just like um, every Thursday night for the next five weeks, you're going to see parts of this movie. Yeah. Um, and so it's really long. I, I, oh shit. It's like, I want to say it's like over five hours long, maybe. 
damn. It's it's long. It's long because it was a really thick book. Like I made it like a quarter of the way through the book and said, "Forget this. This is the longest book I've ever touched in my entire life." And I love to read. I'm done. Um, but um, but yeah, no, that was a really good one that came out too. Was the stand, and that's one. You know, I'm not big for remakes. I'm really not big for on remakes unless it was horrible the first time. Um, and even though I think this one was fantastic. Um, even though it was like a, a series of movies to make one, uh, I think it would be amazing if they actually redid that one. See, and I'm a person, I love, if they're done right, I enjoy remakes. I'm just, if anything horror comes out, I'm going to watch it. Mm-hmm. There's some that were done really well. I'll say The Hills Have Eyes, Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 03. Okay. That's who I can think of off the top of my head. Evil Dead. And then there's some that were just, you know, I'm just like, why, why did you? Yeah, like the newer Pet Cemetery was. Uh... I'm in the middle. I didn't hate it, but I was just like, there's just certain things about them. They could have did so much better. Yeah, that's yeah. No, I didn't hate it either. I was just like, Ugh, come on, like you were really, you went that far. I'm sorry because if you're gonna pick, if you're gonna take a Stephen King movie, you better fucking do it right. Like you got that's like taking a John Carpenter movie and trying to redo it. You know, like you better do it right. I agree. But, but they did. They took a. They they fudge the shit out of that movie. <laughs> All right, so the big change in that movie, or mm-hmm. that instead of Gage dying, Ellie dies. Mm-hmm. How, did, how did you feel about that? My thing was my brother watched the trailer. He said, don't watch the trailer. There's a big thing that happens if they show you in the trailer, which I thought was fucking stupid. Yeah. So don't watch it. So I, I didn't watch it, but then I'm sitting at work one day, and everybody at my job knows I love horror. My one boy, Chris, was like, hey, Aaron, did you see the... Did, didn't even give me a chance to respond. Did you see the uh, the it trail? Or sorry, not it. did you see the uh, what movie were we talking about? Oh, Pet Cemetery trailer. Uh-huh. Ellie dies instead of Gage. I was like, son of a bro- motherfucker! I was trying not to watch that, so <laughs> I wouldn't see it. I was told not to watch it because a big thing happens. Oh <laughs> shit! Dying. But uh. what I say is that, that I wish they didn't show it in the trailer one, but that didn't really bother me too much. My brother was saying a way that they could have made it better, the movie better. There was other ways, things he said. I only seen the movie one time. I got to go back and rewatch it. But he was saying, like, when Ellie, remember when she comes back? Or no, I remember when the father, when she, at one point when her father comes downstairs and she's, like, dancing in the living room in her old mm-hmm. room. He says that's how she should have came back. Like, he should have came downstairs to her just, like, dancing in the living room to, whatever, to the music or whatever. Instead of, I forget how she came back, honestly. Yeah, I don't remember how she came back either. But no, that would have been creepier because it's just, like, she's down there like being happy and normal and it's like you walk yeah. into something like that and you're like whoa what the fuck <laughs> what's going on I'm trying to- yeah no i didn't i honestly that really did kind of bother me because i'm not bothering me like oh i'm so enraged or triggered yeah. or whatever but it did kind of bum me out because um in that movie um when gage dies and then he comes back later and he goes to judge's house across the street mm-hmm. um I forget his name, the guy that played Herman Munster. Um, when he goes to, over to his house and he's still in his little, like, his little burial suit and he's got the little straight razor and under the, I sh- oh, this gets me in any movie, any movie at all. I think it even, I think it was in Gladiator too and it even made me cringe. But when you get that, like, right behind the ankle, that Achilles yep. tendon right there, oh, I'm like cringing even thinking about it. Like, my feet will curl in, like, ugh. How, but that how, got how, me. Huh? How, the House of Wax does that as well. Though. Yes. Oh, oh, I hate that. I hate that. Every time. I don't jump during horror movies, but that does it for me every time. And that, like, to me, that was a significant part of the movie. Like, him just, he's like, you know, first I play with mommy, now I want to play with you. And then he, like, chases him through the house and slices the back of his ankles, and that's it for him. And, yeah. <laughs> that was a really good book, too, by the way. And, what bothered me about the newer movie is because with the it chapter one and two, it wasn't exactly from the book, but they did take quite a few things from the book, mm-hmm. which I enjoy. So I'm expecting this from Pet Cemetery, and they didn't do that. I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, I I, already, I knew the movie wasn't going to be as good as the book. I expect it. That's fine. I'm like, what you guys did with it was great. What you guys did with Pet Cemetery, you really dropped the ball. If you'd have taken a lot of things from the book, that's that was just such a good freaking dark crazy wild book and you couldn't just 
take a few things from it. And yeah, because when they do these films, they're not taking everything from these books anyway because it's too much. So mm -hmm. they have to condense a lot of things down. So they could have went back and maybe taken some other things that weren't put in the first movie yeah. that would still play along with the story. Yeah, like they could have done something like that. I totally agree. But, I, it, I guess it happens. That That's the downfall with, uh, I guess with, you know, movies being made from books, but that's also the downfall with remakes is <sighs> they don't always hit, but we always have the originals to go back to. Like that's the one positive thing that we have the originals to go back to. And sometimes remakes are better. I, I got to say it. Sometimes it makes it better. Every once in a while, I, I found a, re a remake, but for the most part, I'm not, I'm really not huge on them. Like I said, unless the movie was just totally shit the first time. Yeah. I like the movie we're going to talk about a little bit. Cause that's when I was watching and I was like, you know what? Like I can appreciate the, the plot of this movie. And I think it would probably be cool if somebody remade it like now, you know, like go to universal studios and remake this movie or something or Disneyland and make this movie. But you know, I don't know. We'll get into that, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad you, that's like a great segue into this. <laughs> now I, I have to know what bothered you about this movie. Cause for me, one big thing about it, like I wish there was more gore, more blood, more blood, guts, boobs and kills. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there's way too much dialogue, way too much, enough, way too much of nothing in this, in this movie. And not enough, you know, not enough wildness and crazy. So some parts here and there, but then it was just like, like right now I'm watching people clean up the fucking carnival. Why do they have to show this? <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. It was a lot of uh, pointlessness to it, not a lot of sustenance in the story itself or backstories really on anybody or any kind of key from anybody, like of who they are and all, except for the, you know, the girl, the main girl, I guess. She's just got a creepy ass little shithead brother that gets lost in the carnival. <laughs> you know what was weird about her brother too is the beginning of the movie, his sister was taking a shower and he pranked Thank her. Thank you. <laughs> That's just some weird incestual shit right there. I mean, who, yeah, you don't do that to your your babysitter. I get it. I understand. I actually agree with that. I mm -hmm. would agree with that too. But your sister? Yeah. Who wants to see their sister naked? That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I understand when you're little, you get curious about shit. There's still like that. You still have that sense of right and wrong. Like, oh, <laughs> But I you don't do it. That's I mean, yeah. I'm not saying that everybody does that. Sorry. <laughs> no, I get what you're saying. But I'm saying he's at the age where, yeah, he might be curious, but at the same time, he knows better. He's at least right. old. I'm guessing. I'm just like, that That part right there was just so freaking... I'm like, what the fuck is this? I, when I first seen it, because this is my first time watch. So when I first watching it, I was like, okay, you know, it's his, it's his babysitter or whatever. That's normal. But then you find out it's his sister. I'm just like, that... Yeah. I was like, what the hell? And then she like rips open the closet and then like he takes a picture of her and then she just kind of shakes him around and like yells at him. I'm like, dude, I would have busted his ass so hard. But you know what though? Like, it, I don't know that I got from the parents later in the movie that they were just probably shit parents. So that's probably why he acted like a shithead. So yeah. they don't know he's at this carnival, obviously, because he's out there at night. And I guess they didn't have that rule in the street. Let's come on. Your ass better be home. That's right. <laughs> you don't make me don't make me pop my head out the door and say your full name. <laughs> yes, that's that's that's, no, that, that's some scary shit right there. Right? We all <laughs> that, and we we I'm saying we've survived. <laughs> that yeah. Scary ass moment. It's like yeah. you gotta be home in like three and a half minutes. How do you know? Listen, that street lights flickering right now. It's gonna be on in about two minutes. We got a room. Yeah, if I'm not at least seen walking down the street, yeah. my ass is grass. <laughs> don't 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 come running down the street where the street lights are already on, and then you decide to come home. No, that's not what that means. Mm -mm. It's not mm -mm. what that means. You better or when it starts, yeah, or when it starts getting before it starts getting dark, you better call and ask your mom if you can stay for twenty more minutes. <laughs> yep, or just call. Well, here's what we would do: call up, like say from one of my friends' houses. Listen. You talk to my mom because if you talk to her, she's going to say yes. If I talk to her, she's going to say no. That yeah. Doesn't, that doesn't always work, though, especially when it's friends that you grew up with, that you've known for years. You know what I mean? You've known for years. It's like, hey, yeah. it's like, hey uh, Ellen, is it okay if Aaron said, hell no. Tell me to get his ass home right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me slap you when I see you again. Too. Uh, she said, no, we'll just go home. Yeah. Now you got me in trouble, too, with your uh. mom. I'm not coming over for like two weeks. <laughs> right? Or it's like, oh, oh, let me see if my mom will let you stay for dinner. Let me see if my mom will let you stay for dinner and then tell your mom. <laughs> and it's always last minute. 
It is. It is because that's what we did as kids. We did. We had no concept of time or know. actual responsibility except for making sure you were home on time. <laughs> it was just the, the funny thing about it was we knew nine times out of ten, especially within the summer and all that. Your nine times out of ten, my mother would say yes, yeah, as far as people sleeping over and eating over and all that. But it's like don't you know we're having dinner at six o'clock. Don't ask her at five fifty nine. Because she made just enough, or she might have made a little bit more, but she's like, I made this, or I ordered this. I didn't, mm -hmm. know, he was, you know, I didn't know he was staying the night, or I didn't know he was coming over. You know, sometimes they'll say, yeah, it's fine. It's like, you, you, you'll even try to say, like, look, I'll just give them some of my food. And my, my younger brother would be the same way, because we had the same circle of friends with him. So, you know, we'll just shit. Uh, no, you should ask me earlier. You're so mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this house is bullshit. <laughs> well, the bullshit part, you might say after your breath. This house is bullshit. Yeah. And she, my, my mom, my mom, you know, well, she won't do it anymore because I'm grown, so it wouldn't really affect me. She was the type, like, if, if I'm acting a fool in front of my friends, I'm just going to be slapped in front of my friends. There is no come here. It's just it's like, oh. Yeah. It was only in the store or something when you were acting a mess that it was like, oh, you wait till we get to that car. You wait oh, till no. we get to that car. Or you wait till we get home, and I'm going to tell your dad when he walks in there, oh, shit, don't tell dad. Please don't tell I'm, dad. My, no, my mom would do it right in the store. Did give really? me two shits. And nobody, <laughs> this is back when nobody would say anything, though. And I'm just, I know. Isn't that nice? <laughs> nowadays, people are just like, you, you hit him? Like, yeah, motherfucker, I did. <laughs> this is my child. <laughs> it came out of my body. <laughs> he's, he's acting a fool. He's, you know, do you want, do you want to discipline him? <laughs> right. <laughs> do that. Okay, but your kid's over there breaking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just picked something up and asked for this. <laughs> But yeah, back to this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it, it, um, this is how the show goes all the time. Nobody this is how mine does too. And I usually, it's like, it's usually me that runs off on tangents and I catch other people in it. So. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's every single episode. We run off on tangents. We're jumping around all over the place. And we'll find a way to get back to it. <laughs> but yeah, with this, with this movie, it was just, again, it, for me, it didn't have enough action. And I'm thinking fun house, that carnival, it's going to be crazy, crazy kills. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of, dull for most of it yeah i mean the only thing that really caught my attention was how how odd the carnival itself was yeah. i mean it, it's you know it's a it's a family that runs this and the family kind of gives you well it kind of gave me like the sawyers from the texas chainsaw massacre kind of feel like mm -hmm. they've got this son he's wearing like a frankenstein mask you can tell he's got problems but you really don't know what's going on till later and then yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought. Oh yeah. Anyway, how weird this <laughs> how weird this carnival was. I haven't smoked yet, I promise. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, how weird this carnival is. Mm -hmm. And it's like then it goes into like this um, like this burlesque show, and there's there's this you know it says girls 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 outside the tent, and this guy's like yeah there's all these chicks in here like my lovely sister Charlene or whatever the hell her name was. She's like all jiggling around and stuff, and it's like dude that's your sister. Again with the ew, again with the ancestral that, shit. Ah. That that type of thing would make me just leave. Like if someone was like, "Hey, you know, your family members in there stripping. I'm just you should go check that. You should go stop them." No, I, I'm not gonna go stop them. I'm not gonna go talk to them about it. Once they're grown they and they have clothes on, I'll discuss it and say, "You know what? I don't think you should be doing this. This is a bad idea. You should probably quit <laughs> that job." But I'm not gonna go in there and see you shaking your stuff. That's none of my business. Right. Could you at least just let me know when you're working so I know not to go? <laughs> yeah, I'd, I I would just go to a whole different I'm like, listen, a different club. That, that would if I was a person to go out like that to those you know the strip clubs, I'd be like, you know what, I'm done. I, I'm done. Quit. Yeah. I'm done. You know yeah. what? <laughs> like yeah, but you love like no, that's somebody's sister right there, man. Yeah. Not not talking about your own sibling, but like, uh, that that could be somebody's <laughs> sister right there. That's wrong. To look at her like that. <laughs> like oh, you were yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah, but I've changed. <laughs> oh my gosh but yeah i know this um yeah so he's got his sister shaking it outside he's like barking at these people to come in and then they're like full-on like basically burlesque strippers mm -hmm. in this tent and it's like i don't our fair's not like that like what the hell like this is weird Definitely. and um i guess uh actually i did um I did see um, when I was kind of trying to read about the movie a little bit too. Um, supposedly, I guess the girls that were the burlesque dancers in that tent were actually dancers. Oh, that's that's good though. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Cool. 
just for the simple fact of you get to, you know, they're getting their little shine off. They're actually really dancing. Yeah. I mean, if that's what you want to call it, then it's. I wonder how the like the the pitch meeting for that went. They're like, yeah, we're gonna have dancers. Well, how are we gonna get dancers? We'll go to the club. <laughs> Start passing out a courage. You want to be in a film, honey? Want to be in a film? <laughs> See, and, and that that right there just seems kind of funny and strange because I I could just imagine like trying to hit like listen, you're going to a strip club. Like, listen, I'm doing a movie and I want you guys to be in it. And everything is a whole different type of movie. I'm like, no, no. Exactly. <laughs> this, is, this is a tasteful movie. This is a horror movie. You may or may not be topless, but this is a horror movie. This has nothing to do with you sleeping with a bunch of people. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be, like, they have to trust you. Like, what, this is, like, you know, this is going to be, like, my first movie. It's called The Fuck House. <laughs> it's a carnival. <laughs> yeah, I could see how a lot of what we were just saying would sound really backwards <laughs> in the right situation. <laughs> you have, I guess you have to have the right people go and make the pitch. Like, I guess for something like that, maybe you should find, you know, a female that's on your team. Like, listen, I need you to get the dancers because if I go, I'm going to look like a pervert. Right. Go. It'll look more like, you know, hey, girl, come in this movie. Girl talk, girl talk. Have a drink, giggle. And I guess it works. I don't know. I don't speak that language. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've, I'm fluent, so. <laughs> and then for guys, it's like, hey, man, you want to be in a movie? What's it about? They don't, they don't, doesn't matter. Does it even matter? Yeah. You know what? I'll be in it. There's going to be boobs in it. It's like, I'm there, bro. <laughs> May well, or may not be revealed, but there's boobs in it somewhere. Yeah. Do I have to take my clothes off? Absolutely not. Nope. Can I? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> Told you. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, I, I just thought that that was the only thing that really stood out that, I don't know, I guess kind of kept me interesting was just to see how much more this carnival was going to get weird and just really out of, like, because that's not a normal carnival. That whole place was just... Mm -mm. That, was, that was weird. Like, it, I feel like it was one of those places where if you're going to it, you're going to go there, say you're new in town, wherever the case may be, it's your first time going to this carnival, you're going to get like that weird, bad vibe in your stomach. Like, I shouldn't be here. I, you know, I'm just going to fucking leave. But you That's just like paid. A, like, I don't care. You, here, you have my ticket. I'm, I'm going home. Bye. This is for me. And, it'd be like a, a carnival on the outskirts of Vegas is almost what it kind of feels like for me. Like, just, you know, like the, the desert wraps. That just go like they just go out and they they got like dancers and just weirdos and incest and monsters and creatures and shit. That, that's not something I want to be a part of. You know, to each their own. But I'm not hanging. No, I'm not hanging out there. Yeah. No. They just got to date your sister. Like no. no. <laughs> you see that big sign? Let's just turn around and go home. This is important. Bring your sister night. <laughs> Bring your Two sister night. tickets. And I'll be like, what do you, I, my first thing will be like, what do you guys mean by bring your sister? Is this like, you know, you're like a sibling thing where you're hanging out with family or is this like a date? Because if it's like a date, I'm not coming. Matter of fact, <laughs> never mind. Bye. I'm not, I'm just going to be a part of it. Oh, ew. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that whole, oh man, now it's just making me think there is, it does have that like kind of incestual vibe, like the whole friggin' movie. It's, like you said, the little boy peeking on his sister. She the said, as soon as she found out it was her brother, she should have just punched him dead in his face. Just oh, hell yeah. One time. And that would have been it. it would, that would have just stopped him from that weirdness. Because then he said he takes a picture of her after in the club. Like, that's, what the hell is wrong with you, kid? Yeah. <laughs> like, jeez. It's like he's going to turn into like a little Dahmer or something. Like, soon he's going to be like torturing little animals. Like, oh, I was peeking on my sister at eight years old. Yeah. I, mean, I like, moved on up. If it was his babysitter, I get it because that's understandable. Right. But if his sister's friends, I get it. But if it's his sister, I'm just like, come on. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I know weird shit happened in the 80s, but that shouldn't have been one of us. Highly. <laughs> I noticed in the 80s, because I just, I watched another one yesterday um, when I was on another podcast. Um, what was it called? Uh, the Mutilator. I got to see that. It's a 1987 movie. It throws you off. It will throw you off, but you just got to sit there and be patient. But um, it had a... I forgot, lost my train of thought again. It had a totally cheesy vibe. And oh, no, no, okay, sorry, because I started to think again, like I should be doing this whole time. Um, <laughs> but no, it had like, it had a lot of messed up kind of theme in it too. Like, mm -hmm. and then, you know, I started thinking about, I was like, you know, like a lot of 80s horror did have a lot of really weird messed up things. It was more, um, especially like with the, the slashers, like they were more uh, sexualized, I feel like. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, these kids have to go get it on in the woods or, you know, like, hee, hee, hee. Like, 60% of this movie is just a group of kids trying to get it on and party. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> the, the thing with that, though, with the slashers, with that, is it is very realistic because as teens and even adults, when you go out single, mm -hmm. single people, I'm happily married, so I'm not talking about myself. Right. But when you go out as single, that's like your main... I'll, all right, I'll speak from a guy's perspective. That's like your main goal is to, you know, hopefully hook up with somebody, whether you're in the guys or girls, your main goal is to hook up with somebody. And if you're in the animals, I guess something. And I guess if you're in your sibling, well, then I guess you just <laughs> knock on the door. Like, boop, boop. yeah, mom's not home. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I get it with the slashers. It's, it doesn't bother me. I, I will say that it doesn't, but it doesn't have to be in every single movie. Right. But you do know who's in that. Like, all right, she took her top off. She's definitely getting killed. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the thing, too. There's like this, uh, I noticed that, too. I, I guess it's like the, um, uh, I guess like the outline, basically, for a lot of the same horror movies is, you know, you have like, uh, you have your virgin, you have your geeky one, you have your annoying one, you have the, the asshole jock. Yep. Like, there's that little, um, that combination that they have to, that they've used in quite a few of the horror movies, like throughout the eighties and stuff. You're right. You're right. They use them a lot. Yeah. They use them a whole lot. And it's, it's, it's always, you know what it is about those type of movies though? They're entertaining because you can always go back to them mm -hmm. for some reason. Like Friday the 13th is my favorite slasher. Jason's my favorite hands down. I can always go back to those movies and I'll say like a movie, like um, the thing is a way better movie as far mm -hmm. as the story and everything. But I'll go back to Friday the 13th before I go back to the thing. Like I can watch a bear sign of the Friday the 13th movies mm -hmm. say this weekend and then do the very next thing. Very next week I can do the same damn thing. The <laughs> thing I can watch, like say this weekend and maybe not watch for a few weeks or maybe a month or two or longer. Mm -hmm. And just, it's I, maybe part of it is because I grew up watching the Friday the 13th franchise and those other types of slashers and just the cheesy campy horror movies to where it's like, I guess you feel, I don't know if, I don't want to say you feel comfortable with them, but it's like, you know, this is, I'm just used to it. Right. It's the nostalgia yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's like, your thing, man. It's like the memories of your childhood. Oh, I remember. Yeah. I remember watching this when I was seven and it would come on the USA Network and it would cut out everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you'd be there watching it, just happy as hell. So you finally yeah. see the VHS and you're like, oh, wow. So this is what really happened. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, this movie was bad. <laughs> I wonder, this movie here, though, I wonder if I would have liked it better if I would have seen it in the 90s versus now. There is some 80s movies that I have seen recently. Like, there's one called, um, oh, shit. It's in a, it's in a, um, the whole movie's in, like, a supermarket the whole time. It's in a little supermarket. Or the intruder. It's called Intruder. It's oh, okay. I freaking loved it. I've the Intruder. It. It's on Tubi. I don't know if you have Tubi or not. Yeah, I have Tubi. Yeah, it's, it's on Tubi. It's called Intruder. I don't know if it's The Intruder or Intruder, but it takes place in this little supermarket. Okay. And it's it's so freaking cool. The kills in it are just amazing. That That's what really drew me to it, because I, I, worked, I worked at Target, so I worked retail, and mm -hmm. there's certain kills in there where I'm just like, I, you know what? When I was working, I was thinking the same shit. <laughs> Not, not necessarily to do it, but it's like, you know, what if a person got caught in this machine or what would happen? Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> it makes you think, like, did the writer, like, work at a store maybe at one point and that's what gave him the ideas to, would, to I, do it? You would think so just because of some of the stuff. I'm just like, okay, like, I don't want to even, I don't want to spoil it for you, but there's just some of the kills that just really stood out. Yeah, this okay. Is my thing. This is my okay. thing. So the kills in this movie, um, I don't know. Some of them kind of got me like that is like, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know how to describe it really. I guess like when the, the monster or the creature, this, this little guy right here, mm -hmm. the incestual creature there, uh, when he gets caught in the gears at the end, yeah. like the gears originally were like, they were together and turning, but then like he gets sucked in it and like the gears are like all the way out here, like comfortably on either side of him. And it's like, you guys couldn't have put like more effort into like maybe carving him out and make it look like he was more squeezed in the gears or something. Like, yeah, like he, how's he hurt? 
How's it he- looks like he's just trying to wiggle through in between him. He's like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to get through real quick. <laughs> yeah, the, the kills were kind of weak. I would. That's. I think that's what bothered me the most about this movie. Like, if these the, none of these kills were really mem- like I forgot most of them already. Honestly, mm-hmm. none of them were really memorable to the point where you're just like, oh shit, that was fucking. That was one of the best kills I ever seen, or that was just an awesome kill. That alone would have made this movie a lot better. There was one. I really. There was one kill that I thought was really fucked up, and I did laugh. <laughs> was when that um the guy with the I forget their names. The guy with the glasses. When he got he got hung right. Yeah, when it came down, it hung him, right? So then he's like, bloop, he's gone. And then, like, all the money that he stole from the that one room when that gypsy prostitute chick got killed, like, all the money started pouring out <laughs> after his body, like, got shot up through the, the ceiling and shit. I was like, he's like a pinata, dude. That's fucking great. Like, just yank him up and all this money falls out. And then later on, like, they're, like, on the either sides of that track for the roller coaster ride to come through. And they're like, oh, somebody's coming through. And so the guy takes that axe and he's like standing on the outside of the tunnel. And then the cart comes through and he goes whack. And as soon as he hits it, it's a fucking dude that was just hung and already was dead. And like, I was like, that's pretty fucked up, man. Like, I like it twice. <laughs> I like stuff like that. And that guy, he's an asshole because he's, he's dropping shit. When they're looking at the, the father and his mutated son, he dropped mm-hmm. the damn lighter and just fucks everything up. Yeah, and then he went and shut up. He's like, oh, man, look, I, was just trying to, I was just trying to take that money or do this or whatever. And he's, like, yelling at him, like, you guys need to shut the fuck up. Like, they can hear you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, I, as soon as he dropped the light, I can like, fuck, oh, man. Nice going. Like, like, man, but now we can't finish the rest of that joint we were smoking earlier behind the tent. Shit. And he's, the funny thing was, he was the last one to, to be smoking it. Because he's like, hang on, I'm not done yet. And then. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right, because they went to go take off, and he's like, what the hell? I wasn't even finished. Like, you can't walk with it. That's, that was nothing about it. It's not a big-ass bomb. Just walk and smoke. That's what people do. Yeah, well, I mean, not in the 80s, though, but now, I know that's the crazy thing about weed, too. It's like, now it's like, it's on and in everything. Before, it was like, you had to hide. Well, I still feel that way, though. It's like, I go to Vegas, and I still feel like I have to hide around a corner. It, I think it varies where you are. It, it yeah. definitely very where you are which is just crazy i'm like it's it doesn't i'm you're you're okay with drinking but i can't get high like these guys are gonna get drunk and fist fight we're gonna get high and start laughing order something to eat and probably watch something maybe play a video game nothing violent's gonna happen exactly the only thing violent that's gonna happen is me attacking this fucking pizza right now <laughs> it. i'm gonna murder these breadsticks in a second <laughs> in, in the laughter the violent laughter and i say that like, I can't tell you how many times my brother and I would be gaming. Like, he's out in Colorado now, so we'd be gaming, talking to each other with the headset. And I remember laughing so hard. Like, I had tears in my eyes. My stomach hurt. I had to take the headset off. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing. And I put it back on. And he said he had to do the same exact thing. And he put, So I put it back on. I hear him. Like, he could just say, like, one word. It could be like, yo. And I would just crack up laughing. Or if I hear him laughing, start laughing harder. And I, I was, like, out of breath. <laughs> and we, I was streaming at the same time on Twitch, and I remember, <laughs> I remember going to work like that after that weekend was over. One of my boys was like, "Yo," he's like, "What the hell were you two talking about?" At one point, you were the old. This is when the Old Town Road song was like really, really popular. Uh, we were singing it, and then we were talking about it. And my high ass is like, "Yo," I was like, "I'd ride a horse to my dad's house." I don't know why I said that, <laughs> and it went from that. <laughs> Like the, way, like, the way I go to my dad's, I take this back road sometimes. And if you go there at night, sometimes there's deer that come out. And I was like, no, do deer and horses get along here? Like, I don't know why. So I explained that to him. And I was just like, just in case if I rode a horse to my dad's. And in my mind, I guess I was really thinking about riding a horse to my father's. Like, if I ride a horse to my dad's, I'm going to fight. Is the deer going to attack the horse? What's going to happen? And I don't remember where the conversation went. <laughs> <laughs> this was a, a good 20-minute conversation about this. I'm just like, wow. But that is actually kind of a legit question. Like, do horses and deer get along? It's a great question. You that know? is. That's a good I, question. For all I know, they could be mortal enemies, and as soon as you they get by each other, they just start fighting, like <laughs> Peter and the chicken, or me and Nicholas yeah. Cage, because we don't like it. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing about me. I, I don't like Nicholas Cage. If well, he, I don't either. He creeps me the fuck out. He pisses me off. He, creeps, he doesn't creep me out. He's just annoying. Like, I feel... Every single movie that he's in, uh, I don't know how he always gets brought up on his podcast, but every single movie that, he's in, <laughs> that I've seen, he's the same freaking character. He yells, he makes stupid faces, not just his own, and he just 
I just, I don't know. I, I just don't like him. I wish, and it, what makes me mad now is he was in the movie Mandy, which is a horror movie. And of course, I have friends that know how I feel about Nicolas Cage. So, guess what they want to review? Mandy. <laughs> so, any movie, any horror movie that he's involved in, I know it's either going to be a listener, an avid listener, someone that came on the show, or one of my great, amazing friends or family members. Hey, let's review this movie that Nicolas Cage was in. I'm just like, fine. <laughs> I don't want to, but I will. Oh, yeah, no, I don't like him either. I really don't. I, uh, I don't know. He's, I don't mean like, um, I don't, he's just, he gives me like a creepy weirdo vibe. You know, like, I just, I don't know. There's something about him. I just don't, I don't like, but you're right. They do get typecast him basically uh, I, same know, way. I feel like every movie he's in, he reads the script and he's like, okay, I got it. I got it. And just does whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> Nicholas Cage, he has a big name. He had a really big name at one time. Nicholas Cage, the name, will, the name will draw the audience. Let him play the same character he's been playing for the past 10 movies. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. I could be 100% wrong. I just feel like you need to do something else, you know? Make your money. Just If you want to stay in movies, just stay out of horror. That's all I'm <laughs> Like, please stop ruining that, please. Do something else, or, I don't know, retire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, but come on, Nick. Uh, go do some of them dinosaur eggs. <laughs> yeah. I think the only thing that would have made this movie worse is Nicolas Cage in it. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I concur, sir. And he he would have probably took the role. Yeah. No, this is, like I was saying earlier, I think this is one of those movies that I think could definitely yeah. um, benefit from being remade. I agree. Like, because there's, I mean, especially, like, if Universal was to pick it up, mm -hmm. like, because there's Hollywood Horror Nights at Universal Studios here. Um, which is, it's, ha have you ever been by any chance? No, I have not. Okay. It's, um, it's at, it's at Universal Studios back lot. And, um, uh, there's like, um, amusement park basically kind of in the front and all around it and everything. But they, they use, um, actual like props and like movie props and everything. And they have, uh, at characters that like they run around certain parts of the park and they're dressed up like clowns with, um, um, like prop chainsaws and stuff like they don't have a chain that goes on them with the teeth but it does it does pull start and it'll have like exhaust smoke that comes out of it and they'll get they'll get like in your face too like they don't give a shit <laughs> they'll do everything but physically grab you um and they get pretty intense there like uh but anyway um if universal picked up something like that and even used it with their like hollywood horror nights i think that would be amazing because they do have rides there too. They they have rides. They have attractions. They have shows. All kinds of shit. That, yeah, that would be cool. So, something I would like. I would like to see this movie remade and something pick it up that can give do its justice mm -hmm. and make it creepier, make it freakier. Yeah, you made the carnival weird enough. All you have to do yeah. is some really cool kills and cut down on the bullshit dialogue. Maybe have a little backstory. Maybe this is a travel. The father. The only thing the father really said about a backstory was. Somebody got killed at the carnival last year in whatever town it was. Mm -hmm. Maybe have something where you're reading like newspaper articles from like the past 20 years of people getting killed at this carnival, you know, because they travel or whatever. Yeah. It's just something that really, because this movie was really hard to pay attention. It was hard for me to. It was. To. Like, I just pretty much had it on at one point, it was like background noise. And I was sitting on my couch and I put my feet up. I was like, no, if I do that, I'm going to fall. <laughs> That's the thing with this movie too, is it had a lot of background noise, like the music, like they, it, it feels like they relied heavily on a lot of music and noises and laughters and little chatters. And I don't know, like it, it yeah, <laughs> just not a lot, not a lot of plot. No. Um, and a lot of noise. <laughs> it, and I mean, these covers over here in the back, they look so freaking cool, but none of this shit happened. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. That guy wasn't there. I was confused about the, well, the big mama right there on the top. I was confused on what that, I was like, is that like a, is that like a, an overweight geisha that moved to Florida or is it a sumo just trying to like chill? It, like, I don't understand. Like it doesn't, it didn't look, I don't know. It was just weird looking. Like it didn't make sense. It really didn't. It really didn't. And it didn't. <laughs> I was looking forward to this movie, too, because I'm like, okay, the fun house, the cover looks freaking cool, mm -hmm. but you can't ever go, but I guess you can't judge a movie by its cover, like, you can't judge a book by its cover. Right. 
I'm not gonna say the movie was horrible because it wasn't. It was just hard to pay attention to. It was hard to keep my focus. It had some fun parts here and there. It had some, oh, here's where the guy gets hung. Yeah. Little weapon. Money comes yeah. out. I would honestly like if I had to rate this movie, I think I'd give it like a three out of ten. <laughs> three out of ten. It's actually it's funny you say that because my ratings have changed on this show. I I used to do one to ten, mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll do like say first movie like how many fun houses would you do this movie out of ten. But now I do positive, negative 10 to positive 10. And I do that because of this movie called Blood Lake. One of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Okay. It's 1987. It's also on Tubi. I'm not mm. recommending it, but if you want to watch it at your own risk. I feel a little saucy today. We'll see where the night takes me. <laughs> now, now, now there's two movies called Blood, with the same title, Blood Lake. There's one. The cover looks freaking cool as hell. It's like a, a woman on the cover with um, teeth, like big teeth. Uh-huh. I watched that one as well. And the other one's Blood Lake. It looks like a overweight Fred, an overweight bootleg Freddy holding a highlighter. <laughs> That's the one that was horrible. They both suck, but that one was just awful. Oh man! Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, the funny thing about the Blood Lake thing is, I was doing a podcast with one of my friends, so I'm watching the movie. Like when I get ready to watch the movie, I post it in my group and on my page. You know, watching Blood Lake, and he messaged me. He's like, "Yo, you're watching the wrong one." <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" He was like, "You're watching the wrong one." I was like, "Yo." Shit. I was like, I'm damn near halfway through the movie. I was like, well, let's just do them both. So I watched the other one, and he watched the one I watched. Well, in the first five more minutes of the movie, I hated it. I was like, <laughs> damn it. And the thing was, like, we were recording that night. He watched one of the movies the day before. I watched them back to back. So it was like the worst three hours of my life. Oh. <laughs> and it was just like, again, I'm, I'm the type, I'll never tell you not to watch a horror movie, but if there's one that I don't like, I'm not gonna recommend it either. I'll just, you know, watch your own risk type of deal, and that's what Blood Lake was. <laughs> and it made me make a list of like, I want to do like the top or the bottom ten horror movies I watched for the year, and that's gonna make the bottom one. The both the Blood Lake movies, the other one may be able to get kicked off. I think the Funhouse movie is gonna make that list. <laughs> <laughs> but it's for me, it's gonna it's first time watches, no matter when they came out this year, just the first time I seen it. Mm-hmm. No sequels, no remakes, because then it's, it makes it a little bit too easy. Because sequels, they're hit or miss, and remakes, as we both know, are hit or miss. Mm-hmm. But it's just the original one, and oh, people are doing fucking fireworks outside. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. Assholes know I'm podcasting. The jerks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's, open the window and shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Road. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. I just don't want to do that because you never know who you're yelling at. If, I don't. Just imagine oh, yeah. yelling and I get beat up trying to be tough. Shut the fuck up. It's like Mike Tyson doing it. Who, who said that? I think it was the guy down the street. Like, it was, who said that? It was, it was definitely the guy down the street. He He's crazy. Go you point at your wife. You're like, she did it. <laughs> She's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> no, that's when Chris Brown comes. <laughs> Chris, it was her. <laughs> what do you think about the thing? Like, we might be playing around sometimes. And she'll like joke around and smack me, and I'll so I'll, I'll pick up my phone and say, "Listen, keep it up." It, I'm, I have Chris Brown on speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> she'll laugh and she'll hit me again. But she's like, "Why do you?" So I'm like, "Listen, because I I won't retaliate, but he has no problem." <laughs> and I know some people will get offended by that. People's just jokes. Relax. Take a deep breath. None of us can violence against women or men. Because there, there is a hotline number for both of us for domestic abuse. If you're getting beat up, guys, call that hotline. Or call Chris Brown. That's the hotline. <laughs> I know that is kind of the hard thing about the world right now is, it, is you can't really can't really say or do too much. You know, even if you, you, know, you really don't mean it, it's just in fun because yeah, it's I, funny. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree. I think I, I do think there is a time and place for everything. And you have to, like, read the room and feel the energy. But yeah. on something like this, if people come in here and take offense, oh, shut down the Horror Surf 30 podcast, any of those words podcast, you hear what they're saying? Listen, you guys are taking shit way too serious. Mm-hmm. We're just joking around, having fun, laughing. But hey. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not that famous yet for me to get canceled. <laughs> so we can say whatever the hell we want right now. <laughs> 30 years down the road, they'll bring it back. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm just like, you, you guys got to stop with that. There's a, t- again, I understand it to an extent, but the person apologized, 
let's let's leave it at that. If they keep continuing their certain behaviors, we call them out. But like, absolutely, you tweeted this forty years ago, and I was sixteen. Of course, yeah. I'm stupid like that. Yeah, it's like, were you a shithead at some point when you were sixteen? <laughs> Part of life. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this this movie, I did. Yeah, this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Three fun houses out of. That. I'm gonna go with a. Uh, I want to say a four, maybe. I, maybe I like, it's because that guy double died. Maybe that was cool and funny, and I like the way the the monster thing's face looked. That was cool. But I, I kind of felt a little. I, I always say Scooby Doo, but I kind of felt a little Scooby Doo ish about it. It's like because he had the Frankenstein mask on, he rips it off, and it's like, ta da! I'm another monster. <laughs> Maskception. It's like. Whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. I, I can see why you say that, too. <laughs> but I'm just like, oh, man. It was just... They did so much better with it. So much yeah, better. Yeah, they really could have. And I can't even blame it on the era, because this era made some of the best horror movies that, are, that people still watch to this day and love. Which I'm sure people do love this one, but, like, classics. Like, Friday the 13th, mm-hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street, the Halloween sequels, Intruder. That's another one, so, with the one I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. And then there's this, and it's just... <laughs> it's like, what happened here? <laughs> I think what it is, too, with the whole... And Blood Lake, which was fucking terrible. <laughs> I, I think with, with, with the slashers, because of how popular, popular they were in the 80s, I feel like people were just like, let's just try this. When, you know, it's the popular thing to do right now. Let's just try this theme and see where it takes us. And some of them, you're, some of them do great, and some are just like, oh, what the fuck were you thinking? Like, you look a lot better with a mm-hmm. story. If you have a better, st- at the very least, have a cool. Even if you don't have really cool kills, have a cool story, and some something. Kills. It's got to be one or the other. If you can't deliver both, you got to be able to do one or the other. Exactly, and I prefer the kills over st- for these type of movies. For something like this, which is a, a slasher, mm-hmm. give me the awesome kills. Give oh me yeah! Kills. Don't bore me with a story. Well, because we're not. I mean, that's what they're. That's what we're there for. We're the sickos that want to see all like the the gore and the the guts and the unique and creative ways that somebody was just killed or decapitated or turned inside out. So, I mean, this is, this is like the practical effects era. This is one that was just like way before CGI. And, uh, like, uh, how, how do you feel about CGI and practical effects? Cause I am, I am very, well, I, I can appreciate CGI when it's necessary, but I think too much of it, it just really kills a movie for me. I, I really like practical effects, especially when you can make them look good. I'm with, like, I love practical effects. Mm-hmm. CGI, I'm with you. It's like a love-hate relationship. I understand where they need to do it sometimes, but sometimes, it, a lot of the times, they overdo it. And I'm, like, I hate when they do CGI blood. I think they just fuck it up. Like, oh, yeah, because you can totally tell that shit. It's like, come on, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to see, like, I want to see the floor and think, oh, man, whoever's got to clean that up is going to be pissed off. <laughs> Not, oh man, whoever turns that computer off is just, they said turn the computer off. <laughs> I don't even know how CGI works. I'm sure it's a little bit more complicated than that. Right. But again, like, I, I appreciate it to an extent. I hate when it's overdone because you can just tell. It almost mm-hmm. looks like an an animated movie. I'm like, you should have just made a cartoon. If you want to put that with CGI, just make an animated movie with some cool kills. I'll still watch it. Yeah. Play it more. It's like the um the Underworld movies, like the, li- the Lycans, like. Is that, a, is that what they were called? The lichens? The werewolves? Yeah. How they were like super CGI. Mm-hmm. But then like you look at like American Werewolf in London and how it was more, I mean it was cheesy but it was like, it was practical and it looked it more looked, realistic to me than the CGI did. Yeah, it, it was cheesy but it was a it was an awesome transformation at the same time. Mm-hmm. I mean look at the original, or not the original but the thing from the 80s, that was just nuts. I was like, how the fuck do you guys do that? I know. <laughs> that's one that's one thing I like about um which I'm jumping around here, but like, you know, some Blu rays, buying Blu rays, how they have like the the extra scenes or extra cuts and something they have like the behind the scenes, how they did this. I'm just like, mm-hmm. Holy shit, that's so fucking cool. Like you made this sculpture of this head that took you say forty hours plus to make it. You destroyed that shit in two minutes. Mm-hmm. Wow. I would love to have that talent. And I get you're doing it for the art of the movie, so the art's always gonna live fine forever. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, damn, you guys made, I made this beautiful piece, and now I got to explode it, and it's like, you know, this took me two years to make for this movie. It took me well, two seconds to blow it up. 
that's how every mother feels on Thanksgiving. I spent four or five hours making all this shit, cooking this turkey, and it's it's gone. <laughs> that's true. I mean, I know they. You never mind. <laughs> and then you just and on top of it, and your assholes are sleeping now in front of the TV. And I had to clean all this shit up. What I don't have enough Tupperware for this shit. Even the butter dish. <laughs> oh yes, the butter for the Cool that, Whip. That, 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 yeah, that's Tupperware, and that, that's that, that's good Tupperware. That um, and for those of you who might be too, who are very, always grew up with you know good a lot of money where you could just your parents went out and bought Tupperware. No, we didn't. You, the butter dish once that's once, once that's empty, that's Tupperware. You you clean that out. You mm -hmm. put, but that's the Tupperware. Like you have family members come over, like hey, is it cool if I take? Yeah, but no, uh, uh, put that glad put that glad thing away. You know what? I only have two. Take the butter. Yeah. <laughs> It, that's the way that the, the funny thing about it. That's the way that people will bring back. Like, yo, I don't need to bring this back. I don't need the Chinese dish back. I give this to you because I know you're not going to return it. Yeah. You don't return this shit, but you won't return my snap glad thing. Uh. <laughs> no, here, you take this, keep it, throw it away. <laughs> or if you've got it in your fridge and it's like full of something, and like you think you need butter for something, you got to pull it out. Like, oh shit, this is a butter. Oh, I'm out of fucking butter. You know how bad now it is? As a kid, especially when it was like the whipped cream and you have like dessert. Say you have like ice cream. Oh yeah, I got whipped cream and you pull the chocolate syrup. Oh, I got whipped cream. Open it up and it's spaghetti. Yes. <laughs> and the point, you might even slip up like, fuck, what did you say? Huh? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Mom, it was a TV, but you're in the kitchen. <laughs> it's loud. <laughs> uh, what what era did you grow up in, if you don't mind me asking, sir? The era I'm 34. Oh, you're younger than me. Everybody's younger than me. I'm so old now. <laughs> I don't even know if I should ask this question or not, but I don't really care. I'm I'm I'll be 37 this year, so <laughs> that's only that's still the same era. It's only a few years. Yeah, it's it's only a few years. It's like uh, <laughs> I'll be 35 in November. Oh, I'll be 37 in November. What November what? First, mm. I missed Halloween by an hour and thirty four minutes. <laughs> you gotta talk to your parents about that. I know. I told my mom you couldn't tell that doctor to cut faster. Like, I know it's a Halloween party, but you know, take your shots, wind it up, let's go get to work. Yeah, <laughs> see, I was November eighteenth, so. Oh, you're real close to that Thanksgiving right there. I am. I am, and I love it. I love yeah. it. So it's like birthday, Thanksgiving, birthday, Thanksgiving. Perfect. That's so nice. That's what I liked about my birthdays. Even though it wasn't on Halloween, it was the day after. So it was like, I got away with wearing my costume a second day. Mm -hmm. and, and I got candy and ice cream and cake and presents. And <laughs> I was about to say, if you're someone who still indulges in candy as an adult, that price goes down the day after Halloween. It's your birthday. So it's like a birthday. Is that jelly beans? Yes, they're the sweet tart ones from Easter because what you're getting ready to say is what I do. Go to Rite Aid, all that shit's half off. <laughs> I just look at this. This is jelly beans and Skittles. Nice. I got these are yeah. These are the sweet tart jelly beans that I got after uh, after Easter at their little sale. These are um, Starburst jelly beans and Ooh. I forgot what else. I think Jolly Rancher jelly beans and the Skittles are the zombie Skittles. Oh. So, you get the weird flavor with them, right? Yeah. You know, I like the weird because it tastes like sour cream onion chips, and for some, I don't know why I like them. What like sour cream and onion chips? That's what I got from it. It tastes like vomit to me. <laughs> we all see, we all got different things. That's true. But I was eating them. Just like, this tastes kind of like sour cream and onion chips. I like it, which is weird in a candy. Very weird in a candy, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> I gave a shit ton of candy away to my brother, my brother and my cousin, like two days ago. So I'm like, I got I got to cut down on the candy. I had to cut down on it somewhat, a lot. Yeah. Because I usually eat it when I'm, you know, when I'm high, gaming. Yeah. Jelly beans. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but Starburst jelly beans is like my go-to. I just have to eat them. Those are bomb. I love those. I just, I don't know. I just like, I like sweet, like sweet sour candy. Yes. Unless it's like uh, red vines or like cinnamon, the cinnamon bears or the red hots, you hot tamales. You know, like the like the red hot the atomic hot balls. Oh yeah, the atomic fireballs. Oh yes, I like those, but I I mess my teeth up because I like to crunch and chew, like even ice. Oh. So my teeth are kind of bad in the back, so I'm constantly having to get like fillings and getting them fixed. 
So I can't eat those because I have the urge to want to chew on them. So I try to stay away from those and I'll just go to like the hot tamales or the little red hots or whatever at uh, mm -hmm. Valentine's Day. See, I like all those. I, li I don't like the red vines either. I do like Twizzlers. The red vines just taste, I don't know what it is. They just taste weird. See, I'm the opposite. Like, I love red. I don't like black licorice. That shit, ooh. Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. I only know two people that like that, and it's my wife and my friend James. They like the black li li licorice, wow, and the black jelly yeah. beans. I'm just like, the mm -mm. God, that's the worst ones. I don't know how to eat Yeah. And not it, oh, like the good and plenties, too. Do you remember the good and plenties? Yeah. Uh, ugh. Yeah, all nasty. Nasty, nasty. No, no bueno. No bueno. <laughs> Whoever made yeah. them, arrested. That's right. Fuck that guy. Why He's an that? asshole. That's disgusting. Probably. Yeah. Now, do you snack on stuff when you're watching movies? Like, what's your go-to for um uh, for horror movies? Horror, um, it depends. Like, if if it's food, food, I'll say my go-to is probably pizza and wings. I know it's generic, but it's just because, especially if it's a movie I, I've never seen before, because it's one of those foods you can eat without looking down. Mm -hmm. like a burger, a messy burger, you have to look down. Lasagna, a messy lasagna, because I love like a sloppy lasagna. You have to look down. But like a slice of pizza, grab it, bite it. Wings, grab it, bite it. And then as far as Candy, I would say like Sour Patch Kids, Skittles, and then um, nachos. Ooh, nachos but, sound good. I haven't had those in forever. <laughs> I'm weird with my nachos. Well, people say I'm weird with my nachos. My wife, and she said it's not nachos the way I do it because I don't like the cheese and stuff poured on there. I hate that. I rather just I'm a dipper. I'm okay. just in and eat it. Some people are just like that's not nachos, Aaron. It's just chips and dip, pretty much. Like, listen, it says nachos on the bag. It says nacho cheese dip. This is mm -hmm. I hate you know what it is because old well, one, it's just too much cheese on some. Mm -hmm. And two, when you get to like the bottom and it's all soggy. But they some people just love that. I crunch mine up with a fork. Like I just crunch it up all of it really well and then just kind of mix it up and it just I eat it that way. <laughs> See? Everybody, we all have our own things. Yeah, we're all weird. We all do things differently. And that's okay. That's what makes us cool. So <laughs> My next thing for you, too, is, like, have you ever watched a movie and they're eating something good and you're like, I have to order that food, like, right now? Or I have, or you may or may, you may have it in the kitchen to go heat it up really quick. I, I can't think of anything in particular. I, the only thing I think of is freaking pizza, because pizza is in damn near every movie. And it's like, uh -huh. that looks so good right now, let me order it. I've, I've done that for, I know for pizza, maybe some other things, I can't think of what. Hmm. As far as, like, even leaving the room. So grab it. I've done that. Leaving the house, I've never done that. That's just too much work, and I'll probably forget. <laughs> so yeah. is it? So it's. Have I seen something in a movie being eaten, and I want to go eat it? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Like um, the, maybe immediately ordered it. Ooh, you know what? Um, Close Encounter of the Third Kind. When he's making the mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. the mashed potato mountain or whatever, it always makes me want to have mashed potatoes. <laughs> I know it's not a horror movie, but. No, that works. Sci-fi movie, so. I was just saying any, any movie across the board. Okay. Um, that or, oh, my God, um, A Christmas Story? Mm. When he's like, meatloaf, meatloaf, double beatloaf. I hate meatloaf. And it makes me want meatloaf mashed potatoes. <laughs> See? It's a normal <laughs> thing. You're just like, oh, man, it looks so good right now. Uh, I don't get to the point where I'm thinking about it, and it's something you have to cook. And like, yeah, it sounds so. When this movie's over, I'm gonna cook it, and the movie's over. I'm yeah. Like, you know what? I'm just gonna heat up leftovers because that, that's right. Like, I gotta preheat the oven. I have to prep the food. I forgot to take the stuff out the freezer that my wife told me to take out earlier this morning. So, like, <laughs> I'm gonna, we're, what's for dinner? We're just gonna order out. You know, let's just order a pizza. It's just easier. <laughs> yeah, it's too hot. I'm tired. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> yeah, it's winter. Oh. Yeah. Still. <laughs> I got hot flashes. I'm getting old. <laughs> I, I gotta use that one. <laughs> yeah, so you got hot flashes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that works for guys. We can't really. She's gonna look at you sideways and go, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got hot flashes. That mano pause. <laughs> Are on a podcast? <laughs> we yes, we can't get away with having those bad attitudes, like the randomness of anger that. You females tend to have at times, mm -hmm. not just Shark Week, but just in general. <laughs> we can't have like even like our time is like during the sports season, and we mm -hmm. still get like I just keep it to myself now. I was talking to my boys about it because 
She just doesn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Just a game. Uh, it's not just a game. Oh, no. I, I understand with football. <laughs> Who's your team? The 49ers. Only because I was born and raised. Well, it's the 49ers and the Raiders because I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area. So. I'm a Niners fan. I okay, was, cool. I was thinking you were going to say the Cowboys. Was like, please don't say the Cowboys. Please. <laughs> Every time I say the Niners, people go, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, I'm not, but I'm just letting you know, by default. <laughs> I'm a Niners fan, and I'm not, from, I'm not from California. I'm from New York. I'm not one of those people who feel – I mean, I know you said because you grew up there, which I, I do get it, but I don't feel like I have to like that team because I grew up there. My, I think I like the Niners because my favorite color is red as a kid, and I just chose the Niners. Mm-hmm. Red, and I made a great choice. <laughs> <laughs> I made an excellent choice. Nice. You had Go. Joe Montana, Steve Young. I mean, we had back-to-back Hall of Fame quarterbacks, and freaking Jerry Rice, the greatest of all time, hands down. Okay, what? There was a lot of good players back there, like Dan Marino, um, um, Dan Marino, Tony Montana, uh, Tony. Um, God damn it! Why can't I say his name? Why can't I get his name out of my mouth? <laughs> Troy Aikman, that's another Troy one. Troy Aikman, thank you. Yeah, uh, Deion Sanders. We had like a whole lot of a whole lot of players that were really great back then. I wish I was alive for that era just to see all the greatness that was going on in like the '80s and early '90s. Because I was little. I mean, I was born in '85, so mm-hmm. I only seen so much, and I'm little and young, so I don't know what's going on. You're just watching, just to watch it. Like I, the knowledge I have now about football, I wish I had that in the '80s. Mm-hmm. But that would make me like. 50 years old now, so I guess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an amazing sport, though. Yeah, I like football. I haven't really watched too much the past few years just because I was just kind of burnt out on all the crap and the drama and the – it just started to feel like it was getting to be, like, WWE to me. So I was just like, you know, I'm just going to back up a little bit for a while. I'm going to let you guys do you, and I'm going to come back in a little bit and check on you and see how things are going. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but like when our team was really bad, like mm-hmm. I before before we got the before the Hall of Fame era, I'll say when our team was bad, I was watching him every Sunday talking shit. <laughs> and, <it was> <laughs> Harbaugh, and then like after he after they got rid of him, I I didn't watch it as much when we sucked again. So I'm like, I spent all this time my team sucking. We had these four years where we were really good. Mm-hmm. Get rid of the coach. The reason why we were really good and we suck again. I was like, you know what? If I miss a game, I miss a game. Like if I was doing something, I wasn't in a rush to get home to watch the game or a rush to go wherever. Mm-hmm. Now it's a little bit different again, and that's I'm I'm now I'm like in the middle. Like if I'm doing something that I, I really enjoy doing, okay, I'll keep doing that. But if it's like something, like, you know what, the game's getting ready to come, I gotta go watch the game. Yeah, you gotta take it or leave it at this point. I mean, I'm, it's it's in the middle. Dep- again, it depends on what I'm doing. It depends mm-hmm. on what I'm playing. A horror convention that's over football. I don't care. <laughs> right? Oh, those are so much fun. Are you um, are you looking forward to any um? It might might be open this year. Around me, nothing's gonna be open this year, unfortunately. Okay. I was supposed to go to um actually I was supposed to my, my wife and I definitely me though she was like up in the air about it. We were supposed to go to Colorado because my brother's out there mm-hmm. and there was a con. Hey, actually his birthday weekend in September. His birthday September thirteenth. His birthday weekend was supposed to be a con in Denver, and it was like the first time you're gonna have a horror con at this area or whatever. But because of the damn COVID had to ruin it, and Nicholas, I'm, I blame Nicholas Cage ruining my life. <laughs> he definitely had something to do with it. But uh, yeah, so that's not happening. I think they put they post post postpone that till next year. Ah, uh, okay. I was gonna fly out to that, and it would have been my first con. It would have been my first thing on the West Coast, and my first con on the West Coast, of course. Ah. Uh, but I can't wait. How about you? Is there a lot coming out for you, or a couple coming out? Um, I have a couple that I'm supposed to be going to. Um, the one is in, in Santa Ana, September 13th, actually, a Sunday, mm-hmm. uh, same date. Uh, and it was called the uh, Creep It Real OC Expo. Nice. Um, and it was going to be my my first convention by myself, I guess you want to say. Oh. Not ever, but for my show, Any Last Words. Because um, I do another show called Girls Born and Jen, and I've done that for three years with a co-host. Mm-hmm. And... I've been to so many different conventions, like with that show alone. Um, But this one was going to be like my very first one by myself. And I paid for it like way in advance. So I'm hoping that that it's, 
that things kind of turn around a little bit to where we can go. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm supposed to go, I believe it, I'm confused on if my producer said it was the Shock Fest Fear, or Shock Fest Film Festival again, or if we're supposed to go to Days of the Dead in Las Vegas. Oh, nice. So both of them are in Vegas, but one's in October and one's in September. And there's just so much stuff going on. We're all confused on where we're supposed to be at. <laughs> so. You know, what's funny is I went to a con, there's a con out near me called Scaricon. It's about, they do one in upstate, like a, about two, three hours away from me. Actually, both of them, because one's in Massachusetts and the one's in New York State, but it's, you know, a few mm -hmm. hours away from me. And I was at this, so I was on my way to the con, and I got invited to another con. I forgot what the con's name was, and I don't even want to mention it because they screwed a lot of bunch of people over. Oh. Shine. But I was supposed, that con was supposed to happen in December. I was like, yeah, I'll go. Got a table. Like my, another podcaster, the, the, the Horror Squad podcast. Mm -hmm. Awesome podcast to check out, by the way. But he's the one who told me about the con. He's the one who invited me to it because he was emceeing the pod. He was emceeing the con. He's like, you can get in there, you get a table for free. But he's like, I do recommend paying for the VIP thing so you have more access to like all the panels and like a bunch of other stuff, which I talked to my wife about it. And she's like, yeah, we should go. So we paid for the VIP stuff, and then it got postponed to February. So we got our room. We had our rooms booked for December, but then, you know, once that got canceled, you know, we pushed it to February out, and uh, it was in Connecticut. And from December to, what was it, about January, you didn't really hear anything, and then all of a sudden, you just didn't hear anything from the con, maybe one or two things in January. And it was sketchy because they deleted their Facebook post. They deleted their Facebook page, I believe, in December. And they were like, we're just going to do Instagram and Twitter because of bullying or whatever online. I'm like, okay, whatever. That's uh -huh. could happen. And then it just went from that to a bunch of people were canceling. Like, a bunch of the celebrities were canceling. A bunch of the celebrities were saying that they never agreed to this con. Like, a bunch of shit was going on. Oh, damn. It was, yeah, it was one of those things. And, like, the guy who told me about the con made a post about it and he messaged me and apologized. Like, man, this isn't your fault. You weren't running the con. It has nothing to do with it. It's not your fault. They wanted you to MC it. Cause they know you have, you know, you, you have a crowd, you have fans and all that, and you have a good energy. I was like, it's not, not your fault. It took a little bit. We got our money back. It did take a little while. Mm -hmm. So it's supposed to be that con in February. And then I was going to do Scaricon in June, but that con got canceled before COVID. I was going to do Scaricon again in October, but, because mm -hmm. of COVID, I guess it's done. I was, and I got invited to another con in October. It was like a horror slash sci-fi con. I got Ooh, nice. When I, at, when I was at Scaricon, they, the guys were telling me about it because I did. I worked with them before at Scaricon with the panels and all that we have to do. Mm -hmm. And he was like, would you guys come to this con? I was like, yeah, of course. It was like an hour and a half, two hours for me. And that one, because of this corona crap, I have no idea what's going on with that. It just sucks because there's it's, and again the one on the west coast I wasn't gonna bring my I wasn't gonna bring the podcast just because it's too much to travel on a plane and all that I don't trust it mm -hmm. but I was gonna bring my business cards and just network out there and now I can't <laughs> now I can't oh no but oh how how I'm oh, sorry go ahead at the same time I got to record like I told you earlier over forty episodes I got to meet a lot of cool people including yourself throughout this whole oh, COVID okay. thing. And, I mean, I learned my green screen a lot more. So I've been having fun either way. It's just, I just wish the cons were back. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely hopeful that things will still be a go when that <laughs> time comes over here. Because California, California and Vegas, we have a lot of conventions. And where I live, I'm only, where I live, I mean, I don't, it's okay where I live. It's. It's okay. We're called Little Texas. We're the Texas of California. So, <laughs> um, so, but where I live, I'm like, I'm an hour and a half north of LA. Um, I'm two hours south of Fresno. I'm seven hours south of San Francisco. And I'm five hours um, east of, I'm sorry, I'm five hours. If I go east five hours, then I'll be in Vegas. So it's like where I live, like I don't want to live here, but it's kind of like a good location for me to get around to a lot of cons. So yeah, that, that's uh, so how long have you been doing the podcast? Um, this one, I've been doing this one since, um, well, I started in December and I was trying to do the pre-records at first, but then uh, my computer crashed on me and everything got wiped. And I was like, oh, okay, this is great. So, um, 
then I was just like, well, I'm going to take a break and try to regroup myself and figure this out. And then when everything just kind of went into lockdown in March, I just started it all back up again. And so I've been going since the maybe the middle of March. Nice. That's so awesome. just a couple months. But uh, my other show that I do, I've been on that one um, for three years already. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So, What's that show called again? Uh, it's called Girls Gore and Gin. Girls Gore and Gin. I got to check that out. Yeah, we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTubers. Um, yeah, I do that one every Thursday night with a co-host, and we talk about um, we talk about like the occult and true crime. We do cover some horror movies, um, conspiracy theories, UFOs, the strange and unusual, like just all kinds of weird, random crap. <laughs> but it's fun. You gotta send me when you get a chance. You gotta send me those links, and I'll definitely check it out. Absolutely, for sure. And I'll. Post uh, when I'm, this episode drops, I'll post them. Your any word, any last words, and your other one. Okay, cool. Thank you. Oh, how um, how far do you live from um, Times Square? I'm I'm like four hours from New York City. Three four hours from New York City. Oh, I'm in, okay. I'm in Albany, New York. Oh, okay. Technically, I'm in Schenectady, New York, but a lot of people haven't heard of that, so I say Albany. What is it? Schenectady. <laughs> Did you sneeze? What happened? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm using that. Schenectady. 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 You know? Pretty much it's like, forgive me for this, but it's like saying skin, neck, and then titty. Oh, uh, okay. I... <laughs> but, Whatever's clever, man. <laughs> but yeah, that's... It'll definitely make you remember a name oh, and how to say it properly. It, it's so funny when you hear people out of town and I've never heard of it and I, like you were just trying to say it like what are you <laughs> it's easy but i mean i've been here all my life so it's easy right i gotcha well there's a um i don't know if you've ever heard of it um it's one of the ones i was talking about i was hopefully going to be going to earlier uh the shock fest film festival uh I, I believe this weekend um and the guys who run it they are amazing gil and matt they they're oh god i love them so much they're amazing people to work with they're really cool guys to know um, but they run these um, horror conventions, mm -hmm. and they kind of travel them around. And this year, they're doing them um, in um, a couple of locations. And the first one starts, I believe, it's this weekend in New York City. Oh. And um, they, what they did is, it's a partial interactive convention. Mm -hmm. So if you're not at the convention, if you're in Times Square and you can see the big digital billboard, you're going to see parts of the convention. And there's like oh. something about these. Um, vampire chicks that are like all oh, trapped and they're going to be playing off and on on the billboard and stuff and i guess people can guess certain things like i think you can use your phone with it or something i'm not sure um but they've gotten really creative with it um and yeah i thought that was super cool because they do theirs in vegas and then the, they're going to do one in hollywood in november and they won't say where it's being held at yet but it's supposed to be like some big event like it's supposed to be super expensive to even get in as a vendor um but oh my god i know it's going to be worth it i know it's going to be worth it so much i went to the one last year last november i went um in vegas we went to the artesian hotel mm -hmm. that place is dope i love that place so much it's so cool and creepy because you go in and it's like they model it kind of like an old creepy hotel and there's like vintage paintings like on the ceiling there's you go in another room and there's like all these different kind of like like the mirror right there like all different kinds mm -hmm. on the ceiling everywhere and you go into um um the big room that has the bar in it and the bar kind of reminds you of the shining a little bit nice and it's just it's cool they've got like these um big stone fountains in the middle of the the little areas that you walk back and forth through to get to the elevators or the stairways and everything. And it was, Oh, it was so cool. It was so cool. You got to We got to get this shit unlocked. We got to get the world unlocked. Cause we got to get you to travel to some of these places. <laughs> I, I need to. And my, see my wife, she loves to travel. Mm. She'd rather drive everywhere. And I'm just like, listen, I'm good for about three, four hours max in a vehicle. But if we're mm. traveling across, I got to fly. I'm not, I don't want to spend a whole day or a whole, three, four days to get somewhere when I can get there in a few hours at a point. I'm, I'm kind of back or forth on that. Like I could, I could fly. Like if I was going to a bunch of conventions, mm -hmm. then I, yeah, I'd want to fly. But if I'm going to take a long trip somewhere, like I, I've spent like four days in a car before. 
my my match is like 12 hours. Uh, that's just going from New York to North Carolina because I have family down there. And I, I'm down since I was in my teens. But it's just like, as far as I'm good, I'm like, listen, I, I'd rather just fly, get there, enjoy my time there. I don't want to take three days to get there, four days to get there. <laughs> and then I'm exhausted either way. You know, then you got to recuperate. And it's like, okay, now I have four less days I can spend here because I decided to drive. Like, I just flew out here. It's yeah. Two, two full weeks. Flying, <laughs> I'm good. Uh, <laughs> but oh man, that so that would be as far as if the world was normal and all this stuff. Yeah. A few more comments. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll send you the the link for the shock fest because um, those guys they're awesome. They'll they they treat everybody really well. Um, and I think you would enjoy going to some of their. I mean, whether it's a vendor or um, just a convention goer, I think you'd really enjoy what they what they put on because even the one um, that we went to at that that creepy hotel yeah they made this big interactive game with everybody um they have these maps printed out and they had decks of cards printed out and every vendor was a playing card like my show girls born gym that i was on my co-host and i we were on a playing card and they were collector cards oh nice and you had to, and they made it, they made the game to where you'd have to go and interact with all the different vendors because you got to get their card from them. Oh, that's awesome. And whoever collects all the entire deck, um, I think you won something. And then there was a big hangman game that was like hung up and it, there was a clue in that map that you got with all the, the photos of the playing cards you had to collect. And then all the films that were being shown and awards and all this other crap. Like it was they do a really good job. Like, I don't think I've ever been at a, con a convention that was so detailed like that and so interactive on top of that. And, and they're going around too. Like, uh, Matt dresses up as a, um, like a ghoul kind of bellhop kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And his name is Jeffrey and he has an accent and he walks around and he, you know, puts on, you know, he stops in the middle of the convention with his bullhorn to make an announcement and, all kinds of stuff. It's it's a badass convention. I think you would enjoy something like that. Oh, I would love it. That sounds so freaking fun. Yeah, and there's tons of celebrities that, that go there, and they're all pretty chill too. Like that's that's the cool. best when you go there and the celebrities are nice and laid back and just chill and mm -hmm. having a good time with you. I understand you get annoyed being around people too much or get bored, but that's what you sign up for. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> And I, I get when people get into your bubble or like your space, that's different. But I'm just like, come on, people want to come get the autograph, hang out. Yeah. And, or you're, you're off to the side trying to like eat or like get a you know a cigarette in real quick, and they're like, hey, it's like, oh god, I just want to swallow this before I have to start speaking again. That, that's different. I, w I won't bother you if you're eat. Like if somebody's like, okay, I'm going to get something to eat, whatever. I'm not going to bother you. Mm -hmm. I did buy um, what is his real name? Well, in the movie Nightmare on Elm Street Part Three, Kincaid. Mm -hmm. Bought him some fried chicken. No shit. Yeah, I, this the same kind. It was not this past one October, but the one before it. Last, what month? What year are we? Twenty eighteen October. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I went to the con. We stayed there for the weekend, and that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, me and him were joking around. And I know his name's gonna pop into my head eventually. But anyways, we were joking around the whole weekend, and I don't know. I think it was Saturday. I talked, or it was either Friday or Saturday. I don't remember which day it was, but anyways, mm -hmm. I went up to talk to him. And my wife was like, hey, it was either like my brother-in-law. He, you know, him and his wife had just moved out to Colorado earlier this year, and he couldn't make it to the con. On his lunch break, or one of his breaks, would you talk to him? My husband called him. He's like, yeah, of course. So I called my brother. I didn't even say anything to him. I just called him, hit his number, and handed him the phone. And he talked to him for like 15 minutes or whatever. And my brother, or my brother, he gave me the phone back, and my brother was like, yo, thank you so much. And I was like, listen, I was like, you know I like to steal credit all the time. But I was like, this, my wife, did, her name's Francis. So I was like, you know, this was all Francis. But I, I, I had nothing to do with it. This was her. I just hit call. <laughs> he was, but he was real happy about it, which was just cool. But anyway, I went back to him later on. I was talking to him. I was like, hey, I was like, I have a, you know, I, him, I told him I have a podcast. I explained to him what a podcast was. I was like, I'd love to get you on my show one day. And he was like, you know what? He was like, give me about 20 minutes, and I'll come over there and sit down and record with you for a little bit. I was like, really? I was like, awesome. I came back about 20 minutes later. He came and talked to me for at least 20 minutes to a half hour, and it just meant so much because he takes the time. Because he could have been sitting there just signing autographs and making money. But yeah. he took that time out to come sit with me, and I was just like, that was just an amazing, awesome moment. And he, I, 
he mentioned he was hungry and he was saying something about food or whatever. I was like, yeah, like, they got a good chicken spot downstairs. I was like, I'll tell you what. I I think it was that I don't remember. Yeah, it was that Saturday I did get him the chicken. I was like, yeah, I'll tell you what. I was like, once you know, once things kind of calm down and stuff, I'll, be, I'll grab you. Some. I'll, I'll go grab you some. And he's like, really? I was like, yeah. So I went down at some point, grabbed him, some, got something to eat for me and my wife. I think we took it back to the room and grabbed him some fried chicken and gave it to him. The next day, he told me how good that chicken was. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's one thing I will never lie to you about is how good fried chicken is. Uh, another highlight of that weekend was from that Friday to that Sunday, we would be walking by a table. Hey, Aaron, come over here and come talk to me. Come hang out with me for a minute. And I'm standing behind the table talking to him. And the, the cool thing about it is we'd be going back and forth, joking around as fans are like walking by and sign up, getting autographs. And I just like just little things like that mean so much to us fans. To where they treat us like, they treat us like more than just fans. They treat you like people. You know what I mean? You treat them like yeah. people. Because it's like, I don't know. I was, I was just like, this is so freaking cool. It's so fun. But another thing is like going there because like with this kind, I was going there. I got a media pass. With the media pass, I got a free table, two passes, and two chairs for free for the weekend. And the only thing I want you to do for them is before the con, promote it have the guy who runs the con come on the show and moderate panels. I'm like, okay, so you want me to sit on stage with some of the celebrities here, celebrity guests here and there. You want me to promote the con, which I do anyway, and you want to come on my show? And I just don't have to, the only thing I have to pay for is power for the weekend? All right, <laughs> oh, easy. <laughs> sign me, where do I sign? And it was such a, such a great freaking time, such a great experience. Now, with, when you bring your show, do you guys go as vendors or do you go as media? Um, it depends. There has been a couple of times um, where um, I want to say is that we didn't necessarily have a booth ourselves because um, with this sh this show, um, there's it's just me. It's 100% me. I don't have a producer. I don't have a director. It's just 100% me. The other show, I do have a producer and a director, and it's through a uh, production company or a film company. And um, there were, I, I want to say we, we weren't able to get a booth our, for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So he was able to get us media passes. And we just kind of tagged along with one of the other tables that was able, one of our other okay. company's tables that was able to get a spot. Yeah. Yeah. So, but other than that, we've gone as, uh, like, as vendors. That's cool. Yeah. It's so freaking fun, like, being on the other side of the table. It's so different. I, I got my first experience with um and i know people would just think we should be talking about fun house but we're done about it. we're done yeah okay. we're over fun house <laughs> but it was my my one friend does a podcast called video game crosstalk and actually there was a con up here and here's how it get back gets back into horror there was a con up here this same april that i did my con in october and my brother real quick it's a huge nightmare on elm street fan that's his favorite slasher freddy's his favorite so they move and like February, March, April, the con comes. Mm -hmm. Guess who's the big guest for the con? You guessed it, Robert Englund. Nice. <laughs> Funny thing was, my sister-in-law was telling me how mad he was compared to moving. She was like, when he's getting his lunch, like when he was getting his lunch together, he'd be slamming things. <laughs> and just, just extra loud and grumpy. And I understood it 100%. But just real cranky and grumpy because he, they were moving. Mm -hmm. So... He left his glove. He left the Freddy glove here. I think he left. I don't know if he left a picture here or sent. I forgot if he left a picture here or not because I know he wanted a picture signed too. Mm -hmm. Or I might have grabbed him one. That part I don't remember. But he left the glove here from Nightmare Alley Part Three, and we got it signed for him. And my wife made like a shadow box for him. Oh. Put it in there. I don't remember if she put a, added a light to it or not. But she put a shadow box, you know, that in there and maybe a picture with it. Mm -hmm. He got his autographs and all that cool stuff. But I thought it comes to horror, and then my friend, my one friend. He needed help running his table for the weekend. He's like, look, I can give you a media pass for the weekend so you don't have to pay for anything. I already already bought and pass, gotten passes. So I was like, yeah, I'll help you. No, no, no problem. And with the media pass, as you know, you get there before the VIP. You can go walk around and see the thing. So I knew everything was. And I brought my wife with me. She just had the regular pass for the weekend. But I, was like, I told the people there, like, look, she's with me. I'm media with, you know, helping a friend out. And that, I got my experience just sitting behind the table with him at that con and, like, one other con. And the cool thing about it, it just felt good. It felt cool. And once he gave me the spiel, I, I was good. I was golden. And what I did to help him out was anytime people come up to the table and kind of talk or if somebody had, like, a cool cosplay, go right on Facebook Live, tag his page, tag my horror page. If there was, like, a horror person and tag the con, 
mm-hmm. did that the whole weekend, the whole three days. And at the end of the con, people came up to us and they're like, you guys have been really promoting this con this whole freaking weekend. They were, they said, you should try to sign up for a media pass so you can get in for free to work, you know, when this con comes around again or in, I think it was going to like Rhode Island or something next. I tried to, my following wasn't big enough at the time with my pages. I think, I don't remember. He couldn't because he had a, a toddler. So he couldn't just, you can't just up and go when you have kids. Little yeah. Kids. But it was it was just a cool experience. And like from then on, he called me, he was, he was like, you're a social little butterfly. I was like, man, this is like my thing. It's easy. But from then on, I was like, I got to do more of my show. I got to, I got to get to these cons. And I finally got to go to a con with the media and I was just, now I was hooked after that. It was just like, yeah, this is like a drug that I want to do all the time. And I think the downside of the panels for me was I had interviews set up with some celebrities, especially at this last time, but I was on so many panels. Like we literally had no time. It'd be like maybe 20 minutes and they're busy doing something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It It was just, but at the same time being on these panels, you get to like every single panel that I was on, I either handed out business cards to people in the crowd or my brother did. And mm-hmm. we also handed out to the celebrity guests that were on the stage with us. So mm-hmm. it's networking. And then just being up there, getting that experience of speaking in front of the crowd and all that. It's, it's just like one of those things you never think you would do. Like as a horror fan, I never thought as far as this podcast goes, I never thought it would be what it is. I know it's not humongous like a lot are, but it's just me. I mean, as far as, it's an independent podcast as far as, like, I don't have a backing all It's me and friends and family to help out with it and other mm-hmm. people have to come on and share it. But it's just like, holy shit. Like, I met so many people around the world. I've recorded with people from Australia. I've recorded with people from, I think, somebody from Australia, somebody from the UK Sunday. And it's, it's amazing. And it's all because of horror. I'm just like, this is nuts. You think it's just going to be like you and your it's friends? It's great, though. It is. It really is. And it is, it's like, it's like a, you know, it's like a drug, like you get addicted to it. It's, it's cause it's a rush every time. It really is. It yeah. It's, a, it's. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> it, it, it's a crazy high. I was going to say, cause like this past time, for example, we had to travel for about three and a half hours for a minute, maybe because we stopped, but it's like, you go there, you set up and this same day that we go there is the VIP party, which is till one in the morning. So we did, mm. all, we did all that, had all this energy. My wife went to bed earlier, and she's like, you guys stay down here, have fun. You know, your brother came out here, have fun, whatever. <laughs> and that day, I remember all they had to eat is show you how much of an adult I am. <laughs> Candy and cookies. And the cookies were at, the, were at like, the VIP party. Mm-hmm. And I think we, we had a bunch of candy. And so, of course, I had, had a couple shots and just drinking beer. So I'm drunk. <laughs> oh, no. My brother's drunk. My wife's upstairs, like, laying in bed. And so, like, around, you know, like, at cons, they have stuff. You could take a bunch of pictures in front of stuff. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, that's what I'm talking about. In my mind, there was a picture, which I got to find it. There was a guy standing like this in the picture. And I guess it's from a movie or something. And so I tried to mock it. But I was, in, my, in my mind, I was killing it. I did the... <laughs> I went to go look at it. next day sober. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I said, yo, why did you let me do this? He's like, I was drunk, too. Good point. <laughs> 